mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on marketing automation simplified. My name is Debbie Onoroff. I'm a senior director at Hofstra Continuing Education, and we're really pleased that you could join us today. You're going to be hearing from our two presenters, Ellen Williams and Raz Chowdhury, uh, and they will tell you all about themselves. So without further ado, I am turning this over to Ellen Williams. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Debbie, um, and welcome to everyone. Today we're talking about marketing automation simplified, which really is a little bit of a tall order. Um, so we really just want to talk about the basics, make sure you understand what marketing automation is, and then we're going to talk about why it's something that you should seriously consider implementing. So first, first step is what is marketing automation? So this is going to be uh, an unusual question for a webinar, but um, raise your hand <laughs> if you're sitting in your office or desk. Um, what if you think marketing automation is um, we're going to be talking about bots and having all sorts of decisions being made for us and really, you know, the technology of marketing um, sort of take over um, some of the marketing you're doing? Uh, or how about this one? Have you ever purchased something online or, or maybe not even purchased, gone through the process and, and left something in the cart and that sort of follows you everywhere you go, right? So those are types, both of those are types of automation. That's not what we're talking about today. Marketing automation, the way we're going to talk about it, basically it's going to do what you tell it to do. So yes, there's a level of automation to it, um, but it's not going to go off on its own and do all the thinking and, uh, and, and have you sort of sit back and say, okay, you know, we're off and running. You're going to develop and design the types of messages and the pieces of information that are relevant about the people in your database that those messages need to go to. So, so let's really bring it down to what it is on as simple as we can. So what we're talking about is the ability to leverage your data. So your data is whatever you have. You have people in your databases, you have information about those people, and that's where the marketing automation really comes to play. You're going to be able to leverage that information to send the right message to the right people. Over time, as you really utilize marketing automation, it's going to start to acquire more data about the people you're reaching. So you start to get a bigger picture about who these people are. Now, a lot of times we'll have first name, last name, title, email address, maybe phone number, zip code, things like that. But what's nice about marketing automation is it is specifically sending the right message so that the response you get helps to build information about the people in your database, what they like, what they don't like, and allows you to then creatively move forward with messages that make sense. So how do you get those messages out? We're talking about marketing automation in its simplest form is about email marketing. Now, email marketing is not a new concept, and I know a lot of times when I speak to people about email marketing, I get the same kind of feedback. Oh, you know, a lot of the emails I get, I don't ask for, and, you know, I, nobody's opening emails anymore, and I can't tell you how many years I've heard the whole email is dead. Um, obviously, email's not dead, but the last thing you want to do is send emails that aren't relevant. So what marketing automation allows you to do is to get the system 
to send emails, again, based on your message and based on the information in your system, to send messages that can nurture leads. So you've met someone, you've got a little bit of information about them. When you put them in the system, the email goes out directly with the appropriate information that you've preset. So there's a, definitely some thought that goes ahead of the game here. Who are the types of people that I'm meeting? Who are the best customers that I have? And what kind of messaging is going to resonate with them? So it helps you to nurture your leads. These emails also, because they're doing some of the work for you once you've told them what to do, they're going to help to build and enhance the relationships that you've already started. Now, you could have started those in person. You could have started those one-on-one -on -one or maybe in a trade show setting. You might have even started those relationships in social media, someone introduces you, someone makes a connection. Once you've started the conversation, the marketing automation keeps that conversation going. Now, it's never actually going to replace a phone call or an in-person meeting, but it can definitely move the conversation forward because your messages are going to be relevant. And lastly, it can improve the customer's experience. So it's not just about leads. You need to be marketing sort of across the board. So certainly the new people you meet, you want to stay in touch. But your customer database is rich with new and potentially repeat business. And by new business, it could be upselling, it could be introducing a new product. Um, and certainly with repeat business, you can reach out to your client base or your customers to get them to come back time and time again based on your services or products. So marketing should be thought of as a way to really build relationships, whether it's someone you've just met or someone you've been working with for many years. Now, given those two people, Obviously, your message is going to be different. I don't want to hear about your business like I've never worked with you before if we already have a pre-existing relationship. Again, that's where the marketing automation comes in because it'll know better. You've set up some guidelines as far as the types of messages that go out and who you want to send them to. So as it learns, you'll learn too. Automation, marketing automation can see who opened your email, who clicked on links within your email. And as you start to develop that information, you can start to develop messages that go with the people who liked things or the people who showed they didn't like things. And again, you're continuing to acquire this information. So when we talk about marketing automation, it's really the execution of the ideas and the creativity that you've brought to the table. You know, certainly um, when I start to develop these types of things, um, if I don't have enough information, it can be difficult. Um, even at the best of circumstances, you can get people that don't necessarily want to hear from you anymore. So none of us like to get um, unsubscribes, but um, I remember when I was putting together an event and I had people register for that event. I sent a reminder, as, as you all got today, about the webinar. I sent a reminder out about the event and someone marked me as spam. So even in the best of intentions, even when you've gotten those permissions, um, it, it can happen, but you do want to allow the marketing automation to do its job because when you're more targeted and you're more intelligent about the messages that you're sending or the messages that you've actually created for the marketing automation tool to do it, you will get fewer spam. Now, again, it happens to everyone, um, but this really 
really helps to prevent it because you're not doing, uh, dare I say, my least favorite word, you're not sending an email blast. And if we really think about it, I'm sure, and I, I, I can guarantee this, none of you truly want to be blasted. You want emails to come into your inbox that are targeted, that are responsive to the things that you want, and that have intelligent messaging. And that's where marketing automation fits the bill. You've taken the time to really think about what it is you want to say, your messaging. But you've then coupled it with the information that you've started with, and then over time, the information that you've acquired so that your messages change over time, your relationship certainly builds over time, and you start to have the people on your list and in your system to appreciate the information that you're sending because although there's an automation arm to it, it's really just what you've told your system to do. At its basic, marketing automation allows you to get better at building those relationships through email because you're taking the time in advance to massage and develop the types of messages you want to people who fit within the criteria that you set up. Now, I've talked about um, system. I mentioned system. There are several um, marketing automation systems. Um, some of them are complex and some of them are not. And um, luckily, um, I'm happy to be working with uh, Roz at um, Sam.ia, so Sam.ai. Um, where the interface is, is really quite easy. So now that we've sort of set the tone on what marketing automation is, I'm going to throw it to Roz, who is the founder and mastermind behind the product um, SAM, which is all about marketing automation and sales so that he can really bring the expertise of the industry to us and talk about why we want to start considering marketing automation. So handing it off to you, Roz. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, Ellen, thank you for offering sort of a very detailed overview of, uh, you know, the, the, the marketing automation landscape. You know, uh, let me start by saying this. Generally speaking, this is something that has been taken advantage of by big businesses for at least a decade, right? So, so when you, let's say, fly JetBlue and come back, and after a couple of days, they, they're, they're essentially sending you an email for points or membership or some rewards program, that's a classic example of an automation, right? So, so, the, so the deal is that automation works. We know it works. Enterprises have always used it. We are, you know, we're constantly getting... Uh, relevant messages after we make a purchase, but the truth is that for the vast majority of small and mid-sized businesses, automation really has not been taken advantage of. And you know, uh, just a little bit about my background: I, I started as an entrepreneur in my well, I started as an engineer at IBM when I was about uh, when I was in college. Uh, did my five years at IBM, and then I kind of followed my family's footsteps and started this uh, web development shop. Uh, and that's really where I truly understood the difference between sort of being a part of a business and running a business. And when you run a business, especially when it's small, you're, you're putting so many hats on and you're obviously inundated with so many different things to do. Uh, so it makes logical sense to kind of have some sort of a system as a, uh, as a platform that kind of gives you an extra set of hands. So, so generally speaking, you, you could look at marketing automation uh, in a couple of different ways. You could see that uh, you, could, you could use it to help you and your role be a little more easier, get rid of the mundane tasks that you might have to do for your sales and marketing. And for your company, whether you own the company or you're part of the company, it'll definitely help you uh, from a sales point of view as well as some process optimization. So having said that, uh, you know, 
uh, Ellen, I'm not quite sure if, uh, if folks on this call could chat or uh, ask questions, but I'm just curious to find out how many, you know, how many that are on this call right now are, are the business owners and the CEOs and the managers of businesses. Uh, is there a way to find that out through chat or I am? Yeah, they can absolutely enter any information you're looking for in the chat yeah, area. Yeah, if you could chime in, I, I would love to know how many of the participants that are on this call right now are either running a business or are in charge of a business, and how many of you are actually in the uh, role of, you know, doing a marketing uh, uh, job or, or marketing consulting? Okay, I'll, I'll wait for feedback as they come, but... If you are the business owner and you're, you're really concerned about sort of profitability, revenue, growth, marketing automation is something that you should definitely take advantage of because if you're selling a high ticket item, let's say you, know, you own a catering hall that sells wedding packages or you own a service business, let's say accounting service or legal services, your, your sales cycle is not a not a impulsive buying type of a product where someone just goes online, makes a purchase, and that's it. Most likely, the product or products and services you're selling has somewhat of a sales cycle. It could take two weeks to make to have a customer make that purchase, or it could take two months, right? So, marketing automation it plays a big role when you have a when you have a sales cycle. If you're selling something uh, at a retail shop where someone just walks in and buys it based on price and quality, then you may or may not really be able to take advantage of marketing automation that much. But the, the reason why marketing automation works so well for, for companies that have a sales cycle is because generally speaking, when someone is looking to make a purchase and it, they need to make that purchase over a course of two weeks or two months, they're vetting out potential uh, competitors of yours as well as other offerings they have and what you want to do is you want to kind of shorten that sales cycle and nurture that client so the world of marketing automation uh, has two uh, two different aspects one is lead nurturing which is you're, you're kind of maturing that prospect into a, an opportunity that is ready to buy and that process essentially uh, similar to what uh, basically essentially what Ellen had said, it's, it's more or less an email campaign, sort of a drip campaign that goes out. So let's say, for example, you run a consulting firm and you offer consulting services. Someone comes into your office and says, hey, look, you know, I've been thinking about hiring you for my, uh, you know, for my, for my new home design or architectural project, and I'm talking to a few other people. I'd love to know more about your services. Can you tell me more? They meet with you. They leave. Now, when they leave, obviously, they've told you a little bit about them. You would enter their, their information into your marketing automation system, and if the automation system is set up the right way, uh, it would essentially uh, send them a drip campaign saying, hey, thanks for stopping by. We know that you're interested in this. Some of the concerns that you had were related to quality of work. I would like to share with you some testimonials that we've had from clients like you. Uh, so that's an example of a marketing automation that kind of runs a drip campaign to nurtures that lead and then ensures that that lead is, is, is getting the relevant information that they need, not from a salesperson, but from the company's marketing initiative, right? So that's one aspect of it. Now, if you are looking at it from an engagement or marketing, strictly marketing point of view, you could use automation to streamline your activities so you don't have to send out, you know, brochures and mailers when someone stops by at your office for something and you now have to you know generate a label send them an email you know maybe make sure that the salesperson follows up after two weeks uh, all of that could be automated in a systematic way so that there's a process in place right so the idea is big businesses have used it for at least a decade uh, and and we ourselves have been consumers of that uh, of those materials now it's time for small, mid-sized businesses to embrace marketing automation. And, you know, what Ellen does at Hofstra, she teaches these courses to actually make it easy for you guys to learn how to implement something like that, uh, is, is, you know, roll out marketing automation, A, to improve your bottom line, which is increase your revenue, and B, to streamline your activities so you're not spending, you know, manual working hours on, uh, on mundane tasks such as, you know, generating labels, sending out one email at a time, and reminding a salesperson to call. Uh, marketing automation, the value is lead nurturing, cultivation, and then, you know, it gives you a peace of mind knowing that nothing falls through the cracks. Uh, Ellen, if you don't mind, let's just go to the next slide so we could cover a little more uh, items. And I'm just wondering, I haven't seen any response, but did you see any response on that chat? Yes, I, it, this is Debbie. Um, people just kind of, I got some answers about uh, 
people's roles, which which okay. is interesting. Uh, one person, one um, attendee is a e-commerce director. Okay. Uh, one is a sales and marketing director, and one is a small business owner. Okay, great. Yeah, that's a good mix, and uh, you know. Uh, Marketing automation for e-commerce is is there. Uh, depending on the platform that you're using, you probably have some built-in marketing automation. But uh, for the most part, you could use marketing automation if if you are doing e-commerce uh, uh, solutions for your clients or for your for your own entity. You could use marketing automation for upselling, cross-selling if your e-commerce platform doesn't have that. So there are aspects of marketing automation you could use. But a lot of times, the problem with e-commerce is that the sh sales cycle is sh so short uh, because it's it's more of a you know something that they could buy right online and there's not much of a dialogue with the salesperson uh, usually uh, that they would you, you would not be able to nurture or cultivate them before they buy now you could definitely leverage marketing automation after they make a purchase to do cross-selling upselling if your e-commerce platform doesn't have it if you're the director of sales and marketing you could leverage marketing automation to do several things one of them could essentially be put to put a process in so that nothing falls through the cracks uh, you know in our system Sam we have a way where you could tag a deal or a lead as someone who's very interested Interested, but their objection or concern could be price and if that is tagged then anything to kind of mitigate that concern uh, via marketing could be sent if you're selling on the phone or in person you could only do so much you need to have marketing back up your claim as an independent uh, source so usually sales and marketing uh, have to work in tandem to close a deal and, and if you're trying to just close all by yourself, sure, you could do it, but it definitely helps to have, you know, a testimony or a case study or a portfolio of work and samples and other materials that you could leverage that comes from, let's say, a different person in the company to kind of help you close that deal. If you are a business owner, marketing automation's benefit is that it will definitely help you save some time uh, by your team. And, and more importantly, you're going to sort of build a platform, uh, I'm sorry, you're going to build a build a business that's scalable, right? So if you have, let's say, 10 clients today or, you know, 1,000 clients today and you want to scale that up to 2,000 or 100 clients, depending on the size of your business, marketing automation comes into play. In fact, uh, there was a survey done on, on some of the fastest growing uh, small and mid-sized businesses in the country, and what they found is that the fastest growing companies are leveraging some sort of an automation technology to to kind of scale that growth, right? Because, you know, we all have been there, you know, as far as providing services as small business owners uh, to our clients. But when you're looking at scaling that growth, whether it's opening up multiple branches or, you know, opening opening up offices in multiple regions or multiple states, you really have to have a system in place that has a process in place. And uh, marketing automation could solve that problem. In this particular slide, uh, I'm going to share with you some stats, uh, and these are stats from various different sources. Some of them are from Gartner, others are from Forrester Research. And basically what it's saying is, you know, when you have a lead or a prospect put into your system and you actually use marketing automation, uh, in the insurance world, it increases quality of the lead by 451%. Now, that may not be the case for your line of business, but if it works for selling insurance, it could potentially work for uh, other types of businesses. Generally speaking, if you are a business-to-business -business type of company, marketing automation helps with conversion rates. Uh, you know, conversion rates are essentially, you know, let's say you have 30 requests for quote, uh, and you've converted, you know, only three of them, your conversion rate is 10%. Now, if you want to dramatically increase that, you really have to do something uh, beyond uh, just uh, calling them and just making sure they have all the information. You really have to send them the right information within that time. What we consider a good marketing automation uh, best practice is first understanding your sales cycle. You know, you might you might have a sales cycle for a certain product that's only two weeks. You might have a sales cycle for a service that's two months or even six months, right? So once you identify that, then based on the duration of your sales cycle, you could set triggers uh, to be sent out automatically to that client for a given product. So it could be, you know, once they request a quote, I want them to get a testimonial within the first day. After that, I want them to see some of the videos that we have online. Then within four days after that, I want them to get a letter from the CEO of the company. And then after that, I want a reminder for the salesperson to follow up again. And then if nothing happens, then I want them to be in our newsletter. 
right? So, so you could set that sequence. Another sequence could be, well, let's say you're in the business of closing deals and contracts and that type of stuff. Let's say you're in real estate and you closed uh, a lease, uh, commercial real estate, and you, your, your broker, uh, your, your client pr makes a decision to sign a five-year lease or two-year lease. You know, 90 days before that lease expires, you might want to start sending some mails about reminders and things like that so that you get you get them on the re-up, right? So marketing automation could also help you with not upselling, but also converting future opportunities from existing clients. Uh, Roz, yes. Do you have an example for a more service type? I know real estate, you know, the product is the house, obviously, but right. uh, um, from a service standpoint, you know, say PR services or any kind of consulting services. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, marketing automation for service businesses is actually, you know, it's a B two B type of business. It's pretty prevalent. I mean, you you want to inform your clients and engage them in various different ways and what that typically means is if you're selling PR services you're definitely putting together a proposal and presenting it to your client now your client might take two to three weeks or maybe a month to make that decision within that period you want to supplement you want to have supplemental material uh, to send to them it could be a portfolio of other projects you've worked on things like that and also keep in mind those deals that don't close you definitely want to keep them in the funnel uh, for uh, for future opportunities right or upsell them on other stuff so for service businesses it's it's definitely something that is considered a must-have because uh, your your sales cycle usually tends to be a lot longer than selling a product uh, and a good example for uh, for PR type of firm or any any firm that provide services that they could use marketing automation for lead nurturing and lead cultivation. They could also use that for uh, other things such as uh, process optimization. So once a client is signed, maybe few things should happen after that. It could be something as simple as after a client is signed, they get a kit in their mailbox uh, with all the stuff that the PR company offers, maybe all the samples of coverage that the PR company has done in the past uh, or a form that they have to fill out. So it could be used for post-sale processing. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, generally speaking, uh, marketing automation is usually used to nurture leads, to get a prospect into a, a very ready-to-buy type of a customer. Uh, once it's closed, it could be used to uh, optimize process. Uh, and yeah, I'll be, you know, if you, if you have a specific pain point in your line of business, whether it's not being able to convert a client or not being able to close the sales cycle, just shoot that out on, uh, on chat and I'll tackle it. And uh, Debbie, just let me know if any inbound questions come in. That's, that's what we do, you know, day in and day out. We provide sales and marketing system and help our clients. We've seen various scenarios where there are effective ways to counter sales and marketing objectives that clients usually face. Uh, 10% increase in revenue. Well, what does that really mean? 10% uh, increase in revenue actually comes from uh, the fact that when you use marketing automation, uh, you're definitely getting better quality leads or you're in, able to increase the quality leads. You're also able to convert more uh, clients. So for most B2B businesses, you know, if you're doing 5 million or 1 million, you're, you're going to be able to add 10% in addition to that using an automation system. Automation system is... Uh, is usually for marketing, but obviously uh, marketing automation uh, is also a sales uh, tool uh, because what you're essentially trying to do is get that lead to climb the ladder of, of you know, coming into your uh, coming into your shop or, or, or your firm and close a deal with you. Uh, okay, let's go to the next slide. And by the way, so far, uh, does anyone have any questions about the value of marketing automation? Because I'm going to get into how it could be used to acquire clients, but any questions on the value? Yeah, if so, just, just let us know. Uh, all right, so, well, what, what does this all mean, you know, uh, marketing automation? How do we actually uh, use it on a day-to-day -day basis, and what are some of that uh, applications? One application is segmentation. You know, some of our clients have a list that could be, you know, 80,000. We have a client out in uh, upstate that, that has somewhere around 80,000 um, their 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 dealership of a bus, and they have about eighty thousand um, leads in the system. We have another business that's a Cisco reseller, their service business, IT services, and they had over one hundred and ten thousand leads. So some businesses have a lot of prospects in their database. So for them, 
uh, segmenting that database becomes very important. Uh, as Ellen was saying earlier, if you're just blasting newsletters and it, you know, and it just it's just going to a generic list, that message may not resonate with your audience, and therefore, you know, you're going to have a, a scenario where people opt out of your list, and your brand, uh, your your brand is going to get, or your business's name is going to get dragged down, the, you know, dragged through the mud because they'll probably consider you, uh, you know spamming uh, or consider your message a spam uh, because it may not resonate with them. So, for example, if you are in a world of providing PR services or other types of services and you have clients in certain verticals that you could have maybe a specialty in XYZ type of service and another service that you specialize in, you definitely want to segment your clients for those services uh, because that way you could speak to them or you could reach out to them better. Uh, another example of segmentation would be, uh, you know, maybe your messaging is really for the head of marketing and not for the head of sales or vice versa, right? So you want to speak to them and say, hey, look, because you're the head of marketing, I want, I'm reaching out to you to see if I could help you with this. I have helped other marketing professionals with X, Y, and Z, right? If you're reaching out to the CEO, uh, then you want to say, hey, as a business owner and someone who's in charge of the business, you, uh, you might have faced these difficulties. My firm solves these problems by doing this. Here are some examples. I would love to have an appointment with you. All right, so segmentation becomes very critical when you're trying to reach your audience uh, and, and trying to get them engaged. Uh, relevant content uh, is obviously a big part of it. Uh, you know, sending out blasts is easy. You could do that with something like MailChimp or Constant Contact, but making sure that the content is relevant to that group requires personalization as well as segmentation. Uh, so that becomes very, very uh, important. Uh, marketing automation could also be used to generate lead. Now you might say, well, how is that possible? Uh, if you've ever purchased a list from a list broker or uh, maybe acquired a list because you purchased a company or, or maybe you, you've sponsored an event and they gave you a list of all the attendees, well then those are, those are prospects, right? Those are prospects that that probably doesn't know a lot about your products and services and probably haven't really paid much attention to what you do. So usually in the world of marketing, that's that's that, that's a list. It's not really leads just yet. So how do you make a list into someone who's maybe interested in buying? Well, you could do a couple of things. You could say, hey, I've met you at this event or I've gotten your information from this source. I'm reaching out to you because because of your role and your company and we provide X, Y, and Z for your role or for your company or combination of both, I would love to have an appointment with you in the next two weeks, what's best for you? And I'm sure many of you have seen these appointment setting types of campaigns. They're very annoying, uh, we, we know how it is, but they are pretty effective and if, you are, uh, if you're cautious and if you're respectful of uh, not over, uh, you know, you know, over blasting people with that type of stuff, you could really use marketing automation to set up appointments. I've seen it done, it works, you just have to be very, very mindful of the fact that uh, you have to, your message has to be very short, it has to be relevant to the role of that person that's getting the message, and your company has to have something that actually makes a difference in that other company that you're reaching out to, right? So you could generate leads using marketing automation, but what that really means is instead of cold calling, you're cold emailing to set up appointments. Any questions there? Okay. Uh, nurturing, well, I touched on that before. A lot of times, you know, your your clients and your leads, they, they definitely need some nurturing before they actually make a buying decision. and oftentimes it, they're not going to just go with what the salesperson says. It, it might be a combination of a few things. So nurturing is a drip campaign uh, using marketing automation. Uh, amplification is essentially you're amplifying your message uh, with marketing automation. You're, you could say the same thing. You could say, look, we have been awarded X, Y, and Z in the last three years, and we just got this recognition. Uh, and we want you to be a part of our client list, right? And you could follow up with that message saying, hey, I sent you a message a few days ago about our award. I wanted, wanted to know if you want to be a part of our uh, client portfolio and that type of stuff. So amplification, you're amplifying your outreach, you're amplifying your message. Conversion, obviously that goes hand in hand with lead nurturing, and marketing automation also generates tremendous amount of analytics. You know, if you have a list of 1,000 or 10,000 people in your database, uh, 
uh, a system like SAM or, or other marketing automation system could analyze that data and give you a full view of who's the most engaged, right? So, so a lot of times you might say, look, uh, I've been in the business for 10 years. I have a lot of contacts. I really have not done a great job in reaching out to them. What is the benefit of marketing automation for, in my case? And uh, I would say immediately is, you know, send them a message about what it is that you've been up to, you know, be very cordial. And then as you start getting response, you are getting a lot of intel and analytics. You could then see out of the 10,000 people in, you have in your contacts, who's the most engaged, who's listening in, who's opting out, who's opening your email, who's clicking through your email. And th those, are, those are intense signals that your sales team could follow up on. All right, Ellen, I think I spent enough time on that. Let's go to the next slide. Any questions, folks? Okay. Uh, and Debbie, let me know if, if you're getting any pings because I obviously I, I don't see them. Yeah, I will. I will let you know. I sent a couple ahead, so I will okay. continue to do that. Cool. Thank you. So alignment between sales and marketing can help your company become 67 uh, percent better at closing. Uh, well, I, I think you know it's something that we can all agree on. If sales and marketing teams could work together, uh, the world would be a better place. They usually don't get along a lot. Uh, sales, you know, sales teams have different goals each month and marketing teams have obviously a different goal. Uh, but from a company standpoint, their goal is the same, which is to increase the bottom line for the company. Uh, outreach or, or engagement in the world of marketing really means uh, reaching out to new prospects, new clients, existing clients, and engaging them. For sales, it just means uh, taking those engaged clients and, and prospects and then con converting them into sales. So uh, systems such as ours, what we do is we, we say instead of buying a CRM here and a marketing, you know, five or six different marketing suite there, why not use a centralized system with automation in the center so that you could do everything in a simplified manner and not have to use five or ten different systems to figure things out. So, uh, and, and automation is difficult if you don't have the data, right? So, so in our case, you have email marketing, social media management, content marketing, direct mail marketing, search marketing, and sales intelligence. That's a software. You know, Sam is a sales and marketing software. And uh, in the center of it is automation. And, and the purpose of that is that as you use these basic tools such as email marketing or, you know, landing page creator or social media management, you're going to gather a tremendous amount of data. And that data could be used to automate some rules on posting social media content or sending out email campaigns in a certain sequence. So uh, that in turn, that data could then be used by the sales team so when they pull up a lead or a customer, they have a full picture of what's going on. Uh, Ellen, if you don't mind, let's go to the next slide. So these are some of the predictions that we have at SAM uh, as to what is happening in the sales and marketing. Uh, there, there's a tremendous amount of shift. People are doing more research online before they're buying, whether it's a service or a product. They are they're much more in control of what they want to, the decision that they make. They, they're, they're a lot less, uh, they're a lot less open to being persuaded to buy something. They're much more of, uh, uh, of uh, a new breed of consumers that would rather be convinced that they need to buy something because they read it somewhere else, right? So, so that's where marketing plays a big role. You know, getting content out in social media, getting client testimonial uh, case studies, things like that really help. Uh, people prefer leasing nowadays over buying, and I think we all know that, right? That's a given. But uh, even in the software world, you know, before you would buy a software from a Staples or you know Office Depot and get a you know get a CD and install that, and that's it. You paid for the software, and that's it. Now, everyone, including us. We're offering it as a service, a lease, so that you don't have to worry about buying an upgrade next year. But on our side, we we are, uh, and also you don't have to worry about paying something a, a huge amount of money up front. But on our side, we're able to make recurring revenue and also provide the best service over a course of time and give you upgrade and stuff like that. And that applies not just to software, but other industries are doing the same thing. You know, you look at Netflix and others. You know, it's become the norm, right? Uh, the new breed of buyers, and you know, I don't know if you know, but nowadays, whether it's a B2B buyer or a B2C buyer, uh, consumer or business that's buying your products or services, a vast majority of the workforce now are are you know millennials, and, and the millennial buying behavior uh, is uh, is different than than traditional buyers, mainly because they care about companies that are socially responsible, companies that give back, companies that have good you know, good measures or good ethics, right? So so if you are someone who's in the world of marketing and you're wondering, well, 
what does that really mean to me and how does it relate to marketing automation? Well, don't be surprised if your competitor won that deal because they sent an email saying, look, our team uh, just volunteered to help the school uh, get a new coat of paint in three of their classrooms, right? Because buyers are now much more willing to go with a brand that is giving and much more, uh, you know, much more socially conscious, right? So that that is helpful. That is helpful in sales and marketing nowadays. Uh, the seller's approach, sell based on intent signal. Don't try to sell anything to anyone that hasn't shown you any intent, meaning they have not shown you one sign of intent that they want to buy your product. To those folks, you want to educate them, right? So if, you, if you've got a list or if you've got a prospect list and you don't know if they're interested in your product or service, whether it's a Facebook ad or an email blast that you're sending out, you want to just educate them as much as possible and then see if they're interested in buying your product or service. And that intent signal could be a web submission, someone who clicked in your email campaign, someone who had you know, made a call. That's obviously an intent signal uh, or opted into, into your newsletter. Uh, sell more subscriptions. You know, whatever products or services you're selling, uh, you might want to modify that product or service and make that much more affordable by you know, making it a subscription. Uh, it may not be possible for certain businesses, but I've seen other businesses do that. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's it's becoming the norm. People want to lease and rent, not buy. And, and that applies to a lot of businesses. If you could offer your service uh, as a lease or a recurring revenue type, it's better for your business. It's better for the consumer as well. And, you know, there, there's a survey done, or there was actually research done by Gartner's, and it says, by 2020, customers expect the enterprise, expect to deal with the company uh, without interacting with the human. And, and most of these folks are really talking about customer service or banking or things like that. Uh, what that means is, you know, just like you, you, and I, you, know, you and I, we use the ATM machine much more nowadays than go to a teller, right? And even now, we probably use, you know, m many of us have started using mobile apps to kind of scan checks and, and deposit checks and do a lot of our banking on apps, right, instead of going to the ATM. So your customers are going to expect much more automation out of your business. Uh, so it's not just something that you're doing to kind of improve your bottom line, but it is kind of almost expected of you to have an operation that's frictionless and streamlined. Uh, technology's role, uh, you know, uh, our mission at SAM is to create a software that's almost, you know, acts like a human. You know, next year our goal is for you to be able to send an email to SAM and say, how was my sales last week? And it'll give you a breakdown of what worked the most, who, who did the most amount of sales, which clients worked, which campaign generated the most amount of sales, that type of stuff. So that way you don't have to log in and use a system and learn a system. You know, today you could do some of that using our system, log in and get all of those beautiful analytics and dashboards. But wouldn't it be nice, you know, <laughs> you're, you, that you get off, you know, three hours before, uh, you know, before five on a Friday and just say, you know what, I'll just email Sam and have 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 Sam do the work for me or have send, send, Sam send me the report. So more human-like uh, usability and interaction is what technology is going to become. That's what's happening with Siri, Alexa, and you know Google Assist and all the AI tools that are out there. Predict outcomes and avoid pitfalls. Uh, if you know that's one of the roles that AI has. Artificial intelligence is you know you'll hear that buzzword over and over again. And in the world of software, that's really predicting new things. In our case. We're able to predict the next three months of your site traffic, the next three months of your, uh, you know, visitor conversion and lead acquisition and that type of stuff, so that you have a heads up on things that are happening, and eliminate data entry and automate tasks. Right. So, you know, technology have always been clunky, but nowadays things have gotten a lot better, and you know, kind of let go of the past experience you might have had with technology. Things have gotten a lot better. Companies, companies like Sam and others. You, you know, we also believe that there's a human element to technology that is absolutely needed. You could today actually pick up the phone and call someone at Microsoft and Google uh, and ask them for help in running ads or you know, managing their software. That wasn't the case three, four years ago, right? So, so, it, so nowadays, technology companies are also becoming much more uh, you know, open and, and respectful of the fact that just technology alone won't solve the problem. It might help you automate and streamline, but there is a human element that that always is there. Uh, Ellen, what is the next slide? I'm just curious. So we're we're running short on time, actually, and, and uh, the purpose of this slide really was to um, give a, a quick screenshot of of Sam, um, but also just to to show everyone this is the type of information that we're really talking about. You have 
all of the typical contact information, but then there's additional information here. All of these pieces play into the data that can be used in, in marketing automation, and Roz so elegantly talked about the interaction between marketing and sales, which is a, a huge opportunity for organizations that are currently siloed there. Um, but we wanted to just give you sort of a look and feel um, to what kind of program we're talking about. And, and although today, you know, we're talking about SAM, marketing automation platforms um, don't all necessarily look like this, but they do have, you know, that kind of functionality. Uh, and then lastly, we'll let uh, Roz, you want to just give us uh, sort of the one minute on, on SAM, and then we're going to talk about an uh, upcoming course at Hofstra. Sure. So SAM, is, SAM stands for Sales and Marketing, and it's a software that uh, kind of does your sales and marketing activities, so you don't have to buy many different software. And we provide all sorts of uh, support to get your data in there. Uh, and it's got automation and some of these other things that we talked about today. But the whole mission that Sam has is to help companies grow. It's a sales and marketing software, and it's it's essentially a uh, central software, so you don't have to buy so many and spend so much time and money. Terrific. Uh, we're going to be talking more about this. I'm pleased to be the instructor at the Sales and Marketing Technology Intensive. This is a full day course from 9.30 to 4.30. And it's going to talk about um, more about the connection between sales and marketing. Today we were talking about marketing automation. Um, what we didn't really touch too much on was the CRM or the customer relationship management that uh, is also included in a good sales and marketing strategy. And so um, if you're interested in learning more about sales automation and, I'm sorry, marketing automation and sales technology and how they work together, um, please um, check out the Hofstra website. This is the actual URL, a little long, but uh, um, if you just look for sales and marketing technology intensive, it'll come up as well. Um, and we'll trash the, the technical jargon. It, it's not about the technology. It really is, as uh, we've been saying today, how to use it, how to connect with your prospects and customers and keep that conversation going through the use of technology. So we have, uh, we've been a tag team here today. Um, I'm Ellen Williams. I am an instructor at Hofstra for continuing education, and I'm also partner development at SAM AI, um, and joined here by Roz, who's the CEO founder and really the mastermind behind the product itself. Um, between the two of us, we have a couple decades worth of technology, data, sales, marketing experience. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the product, please reach um, Raz at raz at sam.ai, and hopefully I will see you on November 1st at the Sales and Marketing Technology Intensive. I'm going to throw it back to you, Debbie. Okay. Thank you so much. This was, this was really interesting. Great information. Um, if you want to uh, visit the continuing education website, it's ce.hofstra.edu, and there you can take a look at all the different programs we offer. Um, Ellen is also part of a uh, course that we've been offering for the last several years. It's a three-day digital and social media marketing intensive, and it covers everything you could possibly imagine. It starts this Monday. It runs Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And it's, uh, it's a really great course, one of our most popular courses. Uh, there's still a few spaces left. Again, ce.hofstra.edu. And I believe you all have my email address uh, since I'm the organizer of this webinar. So thank you, everyone, for attending. And thank you uh, to our wonderful speakers. And everyone, enjoy the rest of your day and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.